Okay. Idamex Ganatani, good morning. It is Thursday, February 8th, 2018, in the last quarter of the lunar cycle Gatto, the fourth winter moon. And normally Thursday's my day, you know, my favorite, my favorite day. <laughs> But not so much this morning. Um, yeah, I set myself a deadline for a proposal that I'm working on. It's not really due until the 15th, but I was hoping to have it done today. Um, to share it with some colleagues and get some feedback and such before submitting it. And I didn't get it done. <laughs> It's not even halfway written. I've had two weeks, but I procrastinated. Got to work earlier this week, really. And um, still got a ways to go, and today is busy. I'm headed right now to go pick up an animal. I don't know. There's something in my trap. One of the traps that I have out is probably a skunk, but it could be a house cat. Who knows? <laughs> the resident just told me we've got some kind of beast <laughs> in the trap <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna go pick it up but um and then I've got to go teach the fifth graders today I'm gonna go uh, into a fifth grade classroom and maybe I'll get some footage of that you know it's time for my Thursday update and I don't want to be it you know the whole thing to be bitchy but I'm <laughs> But I'm a little bit on the funk side of things because the proposal, you know, the proposal. I wish I had completed more of it, and I don't think I'm going to get a whole lot more of it done today. So, and I don't have too many more days till it's really officially due. So I got to get, I got to get bust in my hump here at some point perhaps on the weekend but there's stuff going on on the weekend too I'll tell you about it I'll tell you all about it <laughs> before I tell you what's in store for this weekend <laughs> better release this animal I've got a skunk in the box here I set up this trap a few days ago at a residence in my same neighborhood made a little video at that time I'll show you that Okay, so here's the situation, like I was describing. Typical skunk dig out underneath uh, somebody's concrete pad, their stairway, you know, drive pad or what have you. Um, so, of course, one of the ways to avoid this um, is to go around your property and look for areas where um, where the earth may have sunk underneath some of your concrete pads. It's very typical for the earth to, as things settle, especially with new residences, for the gravel and stuff to, uh, to create a hollow. And the skunks will notice that, um, you know, if they can just dig out a little bit, hey, if they can just dig out a little bit then, uh, and get under there, then that's what they're going to use. Um, once you get a skunk out of there, of course, you're going to want to, um, fill that area with a heavier gravel. <laughs> Skunks don't like to dig in the heavier gravel. Um, using a different kind of trap for this one. This is just kind of a homemade, old-fashioned homemade style box trap. Um, it has front and a back and so back here there's a, uh, a depression pad and a little food bowl with the kibble in there and it's connected by a line to the front and when something steps on the the pad the skunk then it closes up and it's sealed and it's locked in there and um, this way of course you avoid getting the direct spray that you would with a with a cage trap um, the guy who there was another guy who used to do the wildlife um, issues in Lethbridge and 
Uh, he built these. I uh, kind of inherited them from his family when he passed away. But he has this uh, little vent up here. It's nice. You can look in there and see the animal, but I think the original intent of that was to hook it up to a hose to uh, gas them out with exhaust from a vehicle. So we, we're not taking that approach anymore. But yeah, I'm betting by tomorrow morning we'll have a, another skunk to grab. All right. Let us set him free. Okay, skunky. Come out. buddy. Go on out. Go on out. Go on. Oh, so snowy. So snowy here. <laughs> Poor skunky. Hopefully it'll be okay. This is a lot of snow. And he's just a short fella. I'm sure you'll figure something out. I'm worried about this skunk. Shivering and breathing pretty hard. Just found this place to kind of hole up just in the absinthe, and I don't think that's a good place for him to go to sleep on a day like this. I don't know, I'm just gonna take a little walk here and record my update and then come back through here. I might have to recapture him because, uh, He's just gonna lay right there. I don't know, maybe he's shocking out. Maybe there's something wrong and I'm gonna have to uh, take him and warm him up. I don't know how long he was in that box last night either and it's pretty cold. Anyway, what's going on in the life of Rye? Well, I guess the obvious thing is that starting to get wildlife calls again um, for a little bit there nothing was really happening um, dead of winter and I think most of the even the small mammals other than porcupines were you know porcupines and rabbits perhaps but other than them like the raccoons and the skunks pretty much must have been brumating and um, but yeah, now they're waking up and we've just got another cold flash. I think it's around minus 20 today. It's pretty cold. Um, still managed to, to get a skunk overnight. So that's been going on. More, uh, more wildlife calls. There was one 
skunk release at night that I didn't even show the video yet. Maybe I'll tack that on here too. And then I've been working on my research project with the college. And that's the one that kind of has me bummed out today because <laughs> I wanted to be further ahead. Um, I've had about two weeks to, to really write this proposal and just did not get it done. There always seems to be something, you know, coming up to pull me away from the writing. And for me, you know, the writing isn't something I can do in short spurts. It's the kind of thing where I'm pretty meticulous and I, I need to sit and uh, read and reread and edit and proof it and write a couple sentences and tink with those. And, you know, it's a slow process for me and art. Um, and I'm pretty good at it. I mean, <laughs> and that's a problem because I get, then I get uh, work. I mean, I, in one way it's not a problem because the guy needs work, but um, on the other side of things, you know, writing proposals is pretty, pretty tedious stuff. So it's not the, it's not my work of choice. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, maybe one day this YouTube channel will build to a point where where uh, I can just stick to my wildlife work and not have to do extra things. I don't know. It's not beyond possibility. So yeah, I've been dealing with some skunks. I've got a trap out for a raccoon right now that's in somebody's chimney. I've been doing a little bit of proposal writing. Not enough, not enough. Today, I'll be in a fifth grade classroom. I, I've developed this little game that I play with them at the grade schools and middle schools where I bring a, a, a bag of gourmet jelly beans and we're gonna talk about ecology. And somebody gets to be the sun, take care of all the jelly beans. Jelly beans are the radiance, the energy. And uh, I try to teach them that this whole system, this whole ecological system is a energy exchange system. And the source of that energy is the sun. And of course, then the sun feeds the plants and the plants begin to feed different animals. And so I have a little, you know, a little magic bag, a little old fashioned doctor's bag that I bring along with me that has some some different uh, props you know somebody who gets to be the bird I've got a Portuguese clay bird whistle that they get to use somebody gets to be the plants I got a few vines somebody gets to be the, the deer I've got an antler you know an herbivore somebody wants to be the predator I've got a snake I bring a live snake <laughs> that's part of the fun of the show spend an hour with them running through energy exchange and toward the end of it we throw in a human into the mix and watch what happens and very quickly the human is hoarding all the energy from everything even from the earth you know the fossil fuels somebody gets to be the earth they get dirt dumped on their desk <laughs> we have a fun game I don't know if it's kosher to take a camera in there with you know children without uh, permission putting them on YouTube and stuff but 
I don't know, maybe I can get a, just a short, very short clip. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing that this afternoon, <coughs> which means no writing. <laughs> and then after that, I'm probably going to be tired and not want to write, write, and that's kind of how my days have been going, you know. I didn't do a Thursday update last week, so I was in the same predicament, really, you know. Um, running errands, a few errands through through the day pulls me away from the writing, and then by the time I'm done running around, you know, Mahoney's home and Bell's home, and we're in a different mode, you know, we're in family mode and relaxation mode, and the work day is done. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta figure out a better system for myself to be more productive. I don't like waiting, <laughs> waiting to the last minute on stuff, and you know, having to crunch and do that, that whole thing. You know, maybe graduate school, maybe going to school taught me, habitualized me to do my paperwork in that fashion, because that sure is kind of what they teach at school. Quick, quick write a paper, you know, forget about quality, <laughs> stay up all night, sleep deprived and write a paper, and I'm still doing it, um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to work this weekend, but I also have work this weekend, um, I, we're gonna have, for what is for me, the first time I will be part of the officiating Lethbridge Combat Sports Commission at a professional MMA event. Um, we have a fight this Saturday night here in town, and then we got a, a, a tournament and fight next weekend, next Saturday as well. Um, so this is going to be back-to-back -back weekends of working the fights, and what it sounds like is I'm going to be in one of the locker rooms, um, you know, checking the hand tape and signing off on things and taping gloves and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that sounds like where they're going to start me with this whole process. But it should be fun. It should be fun. Looking forward to it. That's an evening thing, though. So I should be able to get some writing done Saturday in the morning. Maybe take a nap before the show. And then Sunday... Um, of course, I've got phonology class outdoors in the morning, and then I've got a couple of language classes that I, t I teach in the evening on italki. In between then, perhaps I'll have a handful of hours to, uh, to work with on the writing. I'm just completely, right now, pretty much obsessed thinking about the writing and uh, needing to get that done. So. I don't suspect this is going to be a <laughs> very rewarding update for my viewing audience out there, um, but I didn't want to leave another Thursday pass without saying something, so this is what's happening in the world of Rye, and I'm going to go back and check on that skunk because I think i got to take it home with me. <laughs> yeah. I think so if it's still in that still in that precarious position I think I'll bring the box out see if I can get it back into the box if I can I'll bring it home with me and there's a there's a rabbit dig out on uh, one side of our house next to Justine's window and I don't think there's a rabbit there right now so skunk can go there to live for now better than just going to sleep in the, in the snow here. I, I don't think that's right. You know, I was expecting him to run out here. There's some big piles of logs and stuff that he could get into. And I could even bring him out here, perhaps. Yeah, that might be, that might be what I need to do. Get him back in the box, get him out here into these piles of logs from, uh, from some of the trees that have been knocked down on the golf course and such. They got a big, big brush and log pile. I'm sure you can get along in there. But I don't know. I'm worried about him. Worried. 
because he's just shivering there, and I think if he's, if he's, uh, what do you call it, shocking out, maybe he's not going to be able to survive if he's in the cold. I don't know. I always start to go into rescue mode. He's probably perfectly fine, but in my mind, it's just not normal behavior for him to be letting me that close and just curling up in the snow like that. So, so go take care of him. All right, good news. I was just walking along the trail thinking, you know, what am I gonna do with this skunk when I bring it home? Because if he's shocking out, maybe I'll have to bring him, you know, actually bring him into my garage or something, someplace a little warmer. But uh, good news. I don't think I gotta do anything. Skunky is on the move. It's right up here. I don't know if he's aware of me right here. But, uh, it's right up here. He's moving in the right direction. He's gonna end up finding his own way to that log pile. So I don't think he's shocking out after all. He does look pretty funny in the snow though. This is some pretty deep snow for Skunky. Yeah, that's good news. He'll figure something out. Oh yeah. Almost forgot. Everybody wants to know about Mandy. Which is a good thing. I last updated on her situation a week ago today. And since then, nothing has changed. I put out a you know, I put out a, a call for opinions regarding whether I should put her back into brumation or not. And I got several opinions on that matter. Um, conflicting. <laughs> most people, most people said, well, you know, look at the natural snakes out there and the rattlesnakes and their situation. And if they're brumating right now, Mandy should be back in brumation. This is most people's opinion, including the opinion of uh, Mahoney, who even last night was kind of getting on my case. You know, maybe you should cool her down again. But a couple of the opinions that I've had that are coming from snake people said, that ship's already sailed. <laughs> we did the brumation thing. And uh, it's time for something else. Um, you know, and from the, from the, the snake people, um, the opinion is that, the, well, the majority opinion seems to be that she'll eat in her due time. And I, I kind of get that sense, too. I don't feel like she's in any kind of really urgent situation right now. Um, I think she's over the real big threat and that she's going to eat when she's ready to eat again. Um, which may not be for a little bit yet, which, you know, he, she, her body is built to cycle through a seven-month winter, basically, without any nourishment. So, I think, I think she's okay. Um, for those of you who've been concerned about her tongue, whether or not her tongue works... Um, I've got a little video to show you about that, but, to, but just before we go there, um, I wanted to note that there are a couple of other, other opinions about what I should do with Mandy. Um, one of them being that maybe I should, I should do kind of a, an enema with her and try to get some, um, fecal matter for lab testing to see if she is overloaded with parasites or not. Um... You know, initially, 
when this was suggested, my thinking was, okay, maybe it is time for this. But as I started to really consider putting that plan into action, you know, it reminded me so much of the time that I was I was living in Boston and I went to the <laughs> the VA hospital complaining about lower back pain, you know, from my from my at then recent history of military experience. And, um, you know, rather than really, like, focusing much on my back, they had a doctor stick his finger up my ass. <laughs> and we were talking about a rattlesnake with a, with a you know, jaw injury. Um, it doesn't seem to me that necessarily that, um, that a very intrusive uh, enema to collect a spattering of fecal matter is necessarily what's right to do. I mean, yeah, she could have st stress-induced overload of parasites. That That's the thing, right? That's the thing. But I don't think so, and I don't necessarily agree with the opinions that she's stressed out. Um, I've been around snakes since I was eight years old. I've raised constrictors all my life. And I, th I think I would recognize <laughs> a snake that was stressed out, you know, body language wise and all that. Of course, she gets creeped out when I open the doors of her enclosure and this kind of thing, you know. Um, of course, she goes into that strike defense mode, but... Um, but this doesn't, this is not the way she is most of the day. Most of the day she's very calm, you know, doing her thing. And I, I sit next to her often in the rocking chair, um, but she doesn't seem to notice me there unless I come right up to the edge of her tank. So for everybody that's worried about her stress level, um, uh, I'm, I'm not so worried about it. I mean, given this is a, this is a weird situation for her and she does spend part of her day, you know, poking around, trying to find um, exit routes from the enclosure. She doesn't want to be here, you know, and, uh, you know, she's going to get out of here pretty quick. Um, it's not too long now before, before the summer will come, but for the time being, She's going to stay where she is, and I haven't decided if I'm going to take any kind of alternate measure than what I'm doing right now, which is just kind of waiting for her to uh, to get to where she wants to eat again. That's that's where I am right now on the on the Mandy side of things. So <laughs> that said, here is some evidence that she does indeed have um, use of her tongue for sensing. Mandy, good morning. There you go. Show everybody that that tongue still works. Hey, everybody's worried that your tongue isn't working anymore. Your tongue works. When you want to use it, hey? Eh?